Hey guys, it's the Coincy Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you a new video where we're going to be going through MRTK and the Oculus Quest. In this video I'm going to show you how to use hand tracking to do teleporting and also to do item selection and also UI selection. So what I'm going to be showing you is playing behind the scenes. That shows you a demo by closing these three fingers. You can basically have a ray that it's going to ray cache to a target location. Once you close the finger, it's going to basically teleport you to that location. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, I'm really excited about today's video because I'm going to show you how hand tracking works. We're also going to be looking at the project that Eric created in more depth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up the Oculus application and I already have the Oculus connected so you guys can see that it is connected now. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize it. And then in my Oculus Quest, we're going to be just enabling the link. So it's going to, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that we can see the scene, I want to show you some of the features. So right now I'm looking at my hands and you can see as I rotate my hands, we can bring in and do selection on this menu that shows as soon as I rotate my hand. We can do the same thing with the other hand. So if I want to rotate it, I can do that. What if I wanted to do a Spider-Man type, you know, teleporting? I could also do that with my fingers. You see that array is actually, you know, broadcasting on the floor and I can just move it up and then move it down. You guys can see how that works. I'm not going to show you that yet because I want to show you some of the interactions here. So let's say that I wanted to bring in the diamond here and I'm using my hands to do it just like I did before with the controller. But I feel like I have more control with the over the selection. It just, just feels really, really good. So if I wanted to rotate it, I could also rotate that as well. Let me let go of that one. And I can also rotate it in different axes here. So let me try doing that here. You guys can see that that's working. What about resizing, right? Like if I wanted to resize this. So let's try doing a resize here. Let's can see how that works. Let me just move, go ahead and move it out of the way. And what about coffee? I'm always thirsty with coffee, so every developer loves coffee. So what about drinking a cup of coffee? Ooh, that, that you know, tasted pretty good. <laughs> but I can do the same thing from far, right? Like if I want to do, just use the ray. Let me go ahead and do that. And I'm going to, there we go. I can move it around, just like I can do the other one. Let's grab the planet. I like interacting with the planet, but this time I'm going to just try to touch it with my hands. And you can see that I can also interact with it that way. As far as like the experience, I think when you, you know, when you're adding hands and when you're resizing things, it just adds a different level of immersion in, you know, in VR and definitely in AR as well. But right now, I think one of the biggest features about this is that you can interact with UI as well. So let's say that I want to grab, if I wanted to grab that UI from over there, let me try that one more time. And I'm going to basically select the window. And this is one of my favorite features from the HoloLens. And that's why the Oculus Quest with, you know, with MRTK, is just such an amazing, you know, feature that was added. Because I can interact with UI just like you can, you know, when you're watching movies. And if I want to move it up, I can. Or if I want to scroll down, I can do it with my hands or so scroll up. What about pressing one of those? Oops, I was able to close it. So. What about that other menu from over there? Let me go ahead and move this out of the way and grab that window, bring it close to me. And let's see if the sliders work. So I'm going to try and there we go. So I can, you know, I can move the slider. What about pressing some of these buttons? They all work. And what about actually typing? I haven't really tried the keyboard yet. And I think the keyboard is behind me. So I'm not going to worry about that for now, but let's do, let's try the drop down. Drop down works. And I'm also going to just scroll down here. I just scroll up and then just to toggle the checkboxes. And that's all working. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down because I want to see if I can select something else. Let's bring this guy here. So the other features that I wanted to show you is how you can do teleporting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the last three fingers and just leave this one, you know, open and you guys can see how we're getting a ray and it has some curvature. So I'm going to be just closing that finger towards me and we're going to be teleporting. So I can teleport, I can teleport. I can also do it with my other hand if I wanted to. So let's say that I wanted to go all the way over there and we can go, you know, we can go anywhere around in this, in this plane. So I'm going to go and get back to perhaps here. There's a couple of instructions that we have as far as like what we can do. If we wanted to do different interactions, 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get back and we can get close to this area. And you know, if we wanted to keep interacting with different objects, you can. And it's gonna, let's go ahead and get closer here. And if I got too close, that's okay because I wanted to see if I could touch touch the piano. I think I can touch the piano. And we can just interact with different objects. So that's everything that I wanted to show you as far as like features. So let's go ahead and jump into Unity and I start looking at some of the options available. All right, guys, so this is a scene that I show you how it was running. So the first thing that I want to show you is let's go ahead and look at the resources under the MRTK third party and the MRTK quest. If you look at this file, there's going to be a lot of settings in here that are going to be very important. The one that I want to cover today is going to be the different materials that you can associate with the hand. So if you want to use a custom material, you can basically check this and then you and then select the material. That material is going to take you to the material that we're seeing when we run the scene. So you guys can notice that the rim color is blue and we get a little bit of a lighter gray and then a darker gray. So these settings are the settings that you saw on my hand. So if you wanted to change this material, perhaps you know you want it maybe a space hand or something different, then you can change that and then just basically go back into resources and then the scriptable object. And then in here you can change it to select your new material and just find it and then associate it. Once you have that, then you know you should be able to see your new material. The other things that you can also that you can also do here in the hand tracking configuration, you can tell it what the hand confidence is going to be. So, if you want to do high confidence, meaning that it's going to you know it's going to require that the hand tracking it's more you know it's more accurate, and you can also change the slider here. Like it tells you you know time after which low confidence is considered unreliable. And tracking is set to false. Setting this to zero means low confidence is always acceptable. I didn't change this, but if you wanted to play with those settings, maybe your implementation needs more reliable hand tracking. So just make sure you play with those two settings. The other one that I also wanted to cover, and I don't think I need to cover any of these because these are just, you know, Eric already set them up for us. So there's really no need to change the, the OVR camera rig prefab. If you wanted to change your own prefab, you can come in here and change that. The one that I wanted to cover was going to be the teleporting prefab. If you go into this prefab, you're going to notice that this is the prefab that we saw, you know, from doing the teleporting. So if you wanted to change the look and feel, you can change how this works. So if we go to the hierarchy, you're going to see that, you know, there's a parabola physical line right, data provider. This is the one that is creating, you know, the curvature. There's just a bunch of settings in here that I'm not going to be covering, but I just want to show you that this is available. If you wanted to change how the line look, what the color of the line is, you know, what the minimum and maximum values are, and then, you know, the, co the custom teleport po pointer, different colors, and, you know, some of the sound effects that you get from doing that. There's also a lot of different, you know, pre objects in here that you can change. Like if you wanted to change what the location of the teleport arrow was or what the look and feel of that was, you can change it by modifying this prefab. So I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna show you that that's available if you wanted to do that. So if you go back into the project and we get back into the resources, you know, some of, these are gonna be some of the main settings that the that Eric is providing in MRTK with Oculus. So just know that this is available. The other thing that I wanted to show you as well, because I've been just doing, you know, the demo scenes that, you know, that are provided in the repo. And, and those are gonna be located in here, like I show you in the previous video. If you didn't watch the previous video, on how to set up MRTK quests with MRTK. Make sure to watch that. But if you have done that, you're gonna know that I mentioned in there that if you go into scenes, these are gonna be all the different scenes that are available. This one's gonna be just the, you know, the main default scene that it's also provided for the HoloLens. This one has some extra information and features that you can also use. They have a keyboard and also a couple of docking. These are experimental features. so. These are some features that the MRTK team is providing for docking. I haven't really studied that that much, so I'm not really familiar with that, so I'm not gonna be covering that right now. Just know that this thing includes more features. And then MRTK Quest development is going to be the one that Eric has been working on for any future development that he's working on. So that's gonna be some of the main scenes. The other thing that I wanted to also cover today was gonna to be, okay, Dilmer, what if I wanted to start with a brand new scene, right? And this is one that I, that I created for that, but I'm gonna just go ahead and delete it. And if you go into the third party here, MRTK third party, and you go into the MRTK quest, 
You're going to see that if you go under scenes and we double click on this basic setup, that this has already, you know, some vanilla setup that you can use for your own experiences. So you're going to start with the other scenes. I just didn't want to have all that stuff in there. You might want to create a new scene with your own environment. So if you want to do that, what I would do is I would just go ahead and clone the, the basic setup. And that's what I did on the other one. And we can say this is going to be MRTK and we can just call it demo or Dilmer demo just for, for, this, for the purpose of this video. And then I can just move it to my own scenes folder that is going to be outside of that third party folder and also MRTK. So this is going to be your own experience. So that's where that's going to live. And then the next thing that I will do is just, you know, add it as one of the scenes that we're going to be building. We can just delete the other one. So what I wanted to show you here is that by default, this is going to have everything that you need in order for you to do interactions with, you know, with Unity by using your hands or by using the control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the third party. We're just going to copy the plane just to show you that we can just, you know, you're going to start just grabbing a couple of things from, from those other examples instead of starting from scratch. And I'm going to go just go into this main one here, perhaps the extra. And we can just grab this one. So the plane has a mesh collider and you're going to need that because when we're doing a ray cast from our hands, it's going to need to do a collision detection. So we're going to need this floor. And perhaps we can just copy, we can also grab something else. Let's just grab that for now and then we can see if we add something else later. And then I'm just going to copy and paste that here. And let me see if I haven't regenerated lighting because that kind of looks a little dead. And perhaps we don't have lighting in this, in this scene. Let me go back into the other scene and look at one of the examples and see which light. He just added a directional light. So we can just go back in here and it's going to paste that light. Okay, that looks, that looks a lot better. So, so, so far so good. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up my, you know, the Oculus application. And I'm going to show you that a scene that is as simple as this, that it contains some of the placeholder setup that, you know, is from the repo and also some of the mixed reality play space. You're going to see that a scene like this already, it will work without, you know, doing anything else because everything is already being set up. So what I want to do is I'm going to be just putting my headset on and I'm going to show you how we can do teleporting. All right, I got this initialized and let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything. And you can see that right off the bat, we get our hands and I believe the teleporting should also work without doing anything else. So if we do, and there we are, it's all, it's all working. And if I want to get, let's go ahead and go back and just kind of rotate myself so we can see. And if I want to do it fast, I can do it fast. Let's go ahead and go back. And that uh, it's all working. Hand is also working. You can see also the rays. So if we wanted to add a component from the other scenes, you can add, you know, you can add the cup, you can add any of the objects that you can interact with, you can add to this scene. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any other questions, please let me know.